Well, it seems like every day I'm having to update you about the problematic decision making of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, and I have more for you today. You are uh, correct. This is not the first ProPublica piece. This is not the second ProPublica piece. You've clicked on the correct video. This is a third scandal with uh, Clarence Thomas. So I'll get to that. But as I just referenced with the two ProPublica pieces, first we found out that Harlan Crow, the GOP mega donor billionaire, had been giving lavish gifts and trips to Clarence Thomas, but Clarence Thomas was not disclosing that information, an obvious situation that could be influencing Clarence Thomas, and he's not letting the American people know that. He's being showered with gifts and trips to the tune of hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of gifts and trips, and not telling us that he could be getting influenced in that way. Uh, ignore my particularly strange energy in this current moment. Then the second ProPublica piece that we learned about um, revealed that Harlan Crow had purchased a property, same billionaire had purchased a property from Clarence Thomas, and that also wasn't disclosed as is supposed to happen when you're a Supreme Court justice. These types of real estate uh, transactions are supposed to be disclosed, but he did not do that. I saw a bit of reporting recently that he's going to go change his disclosures and, and fit that in there, um, which is interesting. Now I have for you this. The Washington Post writes, Clarence Thomas has for years claimed income from a defunct real estate firm. So he's been claiming income on his financial disclosures from a company that no longer exists. <laughs> now, it is a past version, it seems, of a company that currently exists. But all of it, when you take into account the full picture, as we'll get to, is strange. Um, here from the Washington Post. Over the last two decades, Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas has reported on required financial disclosure forms that his family received rental income totaling hundreds of thousands of dollars from a firm called Ginger LTD Partnership. But that company, a Nebraska real estate firm launched in the 1980s by his wife and her relatives, has not existed since 2006. That year, the family real estate company was shut down and a separate firm was created. State and corporation records show the similarly named firm assumed control of the shuttered company's land leasing business, according to property records. Since that time, however, Thomas has continued to report income from the defunct company between $50,000 and $100,000 annually in recent years, and there is no mention of the newer firm, Ginger Holdings LLC, on the forms. The previously unreported misstatement might be dismissed as a paperwork error, but it is among a series of errors and omissions that Thomas has made on required annual financial disclosure forms over the past several decades. A review of those records show together they have raised questions about how seriously Thomas views his responsibility to accurately report details about his finances to the public. Just a little bit more. Thomas's disclosure history is in the spotlight and talks about um, the past reporting I just summarized for you. And then in 2011, after the watchdog group Common Cause raised red flags, Thomas updated years of his financial disclosure reports to include employment details for his wife, conservative activist and bonkers conspiracy theorist, Virginia Jenny Thomas. The justice said at the time that he had not understood the filing instructions. Hmm. In 2020, he was forced to revise his disclosure forms after a different watchdog group found he had failed to report reimbursements for trips to speak at two law schools. A judicial ethics expert said the pattern was troubling. Quote, any presumption in favor of Thomas's integrity and commitment to comply with the law is gone. His assurances and promises cannot be trusted. Is there more? What's the whole story? The nation needs to know, the legal expert said, a uh, legal ethics expert said. Very, um, very bizarre, especially as was being done there when you take into account the zoomed out picture of those past instances with financial disclosures. And then now with all the ProPublica stuff, he just does not care one bit, apparently, about disclosing the information about his finances, about things that could possibly influence him. And that matters. Already, the perception of legitimacy of the Supreme Court is not great. They're going around <laughs> revoking rights and stuff. That's making people have a hard time um, perceive them to be as legitimate as should be the case. We want the Supreme Court to be seen as a legitimate, uh, free of bias impartial body that's what we want 
the American people to perceive the Supreme Court as, and that is being severely damaged, like I said, by more things than just this, but this adds on to it, much more significant things even than this. Of course, the overturning of Roe v. Wade being one of them. Um, but this adds on to it. This doesn't help the cause. Um, and so it matters, especially with the hundreds of thousands of dollars being spent showering him with gifts and trips and that not being known just because that could be such an obvious way to um, have someone be more inclined to side with you with the power they have being Clarence Thomas. And um, as I walked through in a past segment, if you were trying to, even if they're going to argue, no, that's not what it was. If you were trying to, in a hypothetical situation, influence a Supreme Court justice, try to get them to be more ideologically um, committed to a certain agenda, whether it be pro-business for the billionaire or just right-wing generally. One of the ways you could do it, if you had a lot of wealth, is shower them with uber expensive gifts and trips, buy properties from them that the um, one of the family members was living at, I think it was Thomas's mother, uh, for free, so providing essentially free rent for someone and their family. And then the Supreme Court justice not letting any of that be known. And that would be the way that you do it. But then with this, this is just him not taking seriously, being accurate with his disclosure um, of his finances. Here's this, by the way, Mediate writes the response from Crow to all this reporting. I think it's a political hit job. I don't think the media cares really much about Harlan Crow, and I think they're right. They shouldn't care much about Harlan Crow. But I think that the media and this ProPublica group in particular, funded by leftists, has an agenda to destabilize the Supreme Court. What they've done is not truthful. It lacks integrity. They've done a pretty good job in the last week or two of unfairly slamming me, and more importantly than that, unfairly slamming Justice Thomas. Um, hmm. It's not you know, a left-wing hit job to just accurately outline the reality here. Which is he saying he didn't give those, those gifts and trips? No, he's said, yeah, that was me just being a friend. Um, is he saying uh, Clarence Thomas did report them? No, he didn't. Is he saying there aren't laws on the books that say you should disclose certain types of gifts? No, he's not. So it's just this typical, oh, go after the messenger and uh, call them bias or having an agenda without actually breaking down why it was dishonest, why the reporting isn't accurate. And whether or not he agrees with the particular speculation on the part of people saying they think Clarence Thomas for sure was being influenced, was not disclosing it for that reason or whatever, doesn't matter. The facts are the facts. And by themselves, the facts are concerning. Um, no matter where I think, no matter where you stand politically, because of how important, how crucial it is for Supreme Court justices to be understood by the American people to be impartial, not being influenced in these different ways, and just to be transparent uh, when it comes to many areas, including their financial disclosures. Wild stuff with Clarence Thomas. Goodness, goodness, goodness.